Hello everyone, Max with a Website Pro here and today we're going to be moving on to our sixth lesson that has to do with good housekeeping in PHP and then finally we're going to clean up our website with some CSS and so forth. But when we are programming with PHP, remember that it is more like artistic poetry. Everyone will have a different style and you're going to have your own style as well. Many new programmers will not appreciate the styles of other programmers because of their inexperience. But in programming, however, housekeeping is very important. Our new programmers tend to create a lot of messy code and it's hard to read. And I thought it was important to address this now before we get too much further into our PHP lessons. All right, so I am going to use Dreamweaver from now on. I'm not going to I'm no longer going to use BB edit. I'm going to use Dreamweaver. And that is because I think that it's going to help you guys uh, a lot better with uh, PHP snippets, uh, code hinting and so on and so forth. Uh, it's fine if you wanted to use something else like Notepad++ or BB edit or uh, TextMate. Uh, whatever you prefer, but I'm for the lessons. I'm going to be using Dreamweaver. So we're going, uh, and if you want to check out my lesson on Dreamweaver, I just published that yesterday. Yesterday, but uh, you can see it on the site too. But I'm going to navigate to the the site that we've all been working on, and you can download the files at awebsitepro.com. The link is in the description of this video. But let me give you an example of good and bad code. We're going to go to our functions.php. And we have a pretty good code structure here. But what would not be good code structure? Well, let's say if I went down here to head tag, you notice how we have return and we got this on the next line. Let's say that we took this and we put it up there and we took this curly bracket here, maybe put it, you know, oh, sorry took this curly bracket down here and put it up here now notice now we're we, we started out with one structure and then we ended up with this and it's, it's it becomes cumbersome or hard to read and you don't want to do that in your code because I know myself uh, code that I programmed years ago uh, stuff you know going down and and reading through it you know it's easier to read if it's a if it's a if it's a neat code uh, um, you know I ha tried to always practice good housekeeping when it when it comes to code the other thing too is if you're working on a team and a lot of you will go out into the world and you're going to be working on you have a team of web developers and if you don't have good neat code you know you probably get fired <laughs> but along with good neat code comes uh, function or uh, comments and I wanted to talk about comments a little bit the way you put a comment and there's two different ways one way is to you start with two forward slashes and say this is a comment but uh, let's say that you had a lot to say okay there's a second way to put it in you'll notice if I hit enter right here and I start typing uh, this is some more comments Okay. Notice how this turned red in Dreamweaver. Let's me know that hey, there's something wrong here. Now, if I go ahead and save this and I go to our website, here's our website. If I refresh the page, you'll notice we get an error. Okay, and that's because this comment right here needs to be commented out. So that brings me to block comments, and this is the way you do block comment. You'll do a forward slash and asterisk, just like in CSS. Now, notice it blocks out everything, but you go to the end of your comments and then put the asterisk and forward slash. We'll go ahead and save that file. We'll refresh it in the web page. You can see that our website is back. So, those are two different way to, ways to do comments in whenever you're cutting with PHP. In our last lesson, I told you that we would clean up our site with some bootstrap. Uh, an external CSS library and uh, and if you go to our website under web development and hit bootstrap you're gonna have an example of what bootstrap is but what I'm interested in is this this top part 
to put in our head tag. The meta uh, character set UTF-8 cleared down uh, this viewport with initial scale. This is for like mobile devices and smaller screens. And here's our bootstrap library. This will give us our jQuery and this will give our uh, bootstrap JavaScript. And this is all going to go in the head tag. So I'm going to grab this real quick, click copy, and remember in our website here we're bringing in the header with the functions.php. So if we go to functions.php, uh, this function called head tag, you notice we're bringing it in in the header right here. We're not going out the head tag. So we want to go right in here and we want to put in our style sheets. Uh, one, one other thing that I want to talk to you about is you always have CSS on the top and the JavaScript's on the bottom. So this uh, font family, Roberto, we've got to make sure that we take this out and take our style sheet on our site here that we're using and we put it above the JavaScript. Okay. Now later on I'm going to show you how to put this stuff in the footer. But let's clean, the, clean up this code a little bit, shall we? Uh, you notice that link isn't in the same spot. I'm going to put script in the same spot. Okay. That way it's just it's nice, neat, and orderly. This meta, get that in the same spot. Okay. So here we're bringing in our bootstrap library. Okay. This one here is our Roberto font that we like to use. And this is our local style sheet located at style CSS, which is over here. You can see it on the left. And then we have two script sources. We have a script source coming from Google. That's the jQuery script. And then we have the Max CDM Bootstrap. So make sure you have all of them in your head tag right here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save this. Now if we go back to our website, if you refresh the page, you notice it's not doing much. Okay, it did change this a little bit, you know, because we're bringing in the, the, the Bootstrap. You'll notice that the... Uh, this is over off to the left a little bit more. So it's starting to change it a little bit, but we're going to get in a little bit deeper. Now, if we go back to the beginner's guide for using Bootstrap, you'll notice that things start out with the div class of container, you know, and then you put in some, you know, Bootstrap header or text, and then we close out the container with a div tag. So let's go ahead and grab this. We're going to copy this, and we're going to put this in the right after the body tags. You notice how it comes after the body tag? So let's go back to Dreamweaver and let's open up our header.php again. Header.php and then here's our body tag. What we want to do is have that container in there. Div class of container. And let's put that uh, let's put that right underneath the body tag just like that. Okay? And then if we have an opening div tag, you guys know from the last lesson, we have to have a closing div tag. But where would we close the class of container? Well, that would be in the footer, isn't it? Because this everything is going to go in the div class of container. So let's open up the footer.php. And right before the closing body tag, Let's go up here and then put a closing div tag. Closing divider. Okay. So we're going to save that. So now we have everything within the container. So let's go to, back to our website. We'll go ahead and refresh it. All right. Now notice how it brought it in a little bit. It's following the, uh, the bootstrap. You know, Bootstrap always puts a little bit, bit of padding on the sides whenever you put things into a container. Now, what about that menu item up there? Well, let's see what we could do about the menu. Menu looks kind of shabby. So anyway, let's go to our Dreamweaver. And uh, let's go to our header.php where the menu is located. And you notice we took it and we stored it in a variable. We echoed var. And this isn't very neat programming, but that doesn't matter because I had planned to do something different with you guys. Now I'm going to paste in some code here. And let's go over it. 
Now, what you need to keep in mind is whenever you're programming websites, you want to make them responsive for mobile and for desktop. And uh, this is all part of the bootstrap. Remember the different classes that you can assign to uh, different uh, tags. Well, here's a bootstrap class of navbar, and the navbar default gives us it, its color. So we start out with nav. Now, notice if I highlight that nav in Dreamweaver, it highlights also my closing tag. So, and here's a div class of container fluid. Okay, so if we highlight that div tag, we see that it's closed out right underneath the nav. Okay, these are all coming from Bootstrap. Then finally, we have another one. We have div class of navbar header. Now this will um, turn into a button whenever it is on a mobile device, and so and then we'll have these icon bars, but. Uh, Notice this, uh, the class is navbar toggle, and it's data toggle collapse, which means it's going to be collapsed on mobile, and data target is my navbar. And if you look at my navbar, you can see it right here, okay, where it's going to have this all collapse. This, these are two menu items, or foo.php page and the do.php page. So let's go ahead and take this top thing out since it looks so ugly. And we're just going to go ahead and save this. And we're going to go back to our website. Let's refresh the page. And now look, we're starting to get a nice little menu going on there. Okay. So if we go to our do page, we have our do page. And notice it's on it's on every page. Now there's something wrong with our food page. But we got our do page. Let's go see what's wrong with our food page. Cannot redeclare really it last name. Previously declared on 16. So let's go to foo. That's what we did here. Okay, so here's a function called last name. Here's another function called the exact same thing last name. So that's what I was telling you guys before is you can't use two functions with the exact same thing. So we'll, we'll add another E on the end here. And then we'll hit save. And we'll go back to our food page. We'll refresh it. And there we go. Okay. So that was uh, an error probably in a previous lesson. Which might, which might have been driving some of you crazy. But we got it corrected there. All right, so uh, that date up there, November 13th, 2018, I think we should just maybe get rid of it. It was just an example of a uh, function, or we could put it somewhere else, maybe in the footer. So let's go ahead and go to Dreamweaver. Let's go to our header.php. There's the head tag. Here's a div class of container where we're putting the date. Let's go ahead and grab this. I'm going to hit Command X and then Command S to save it. And we'll just go to the footer and we'll throw it in down there. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. But let's go back to the header where this menu is. Now, wouldn't it be better to have a function calling in this uh, menu for us? So, how would we do that? Well, the same thing way we do every other one take this whole entire thing right click cut and then we'll just go ahead and save that file let's go to functions.php and let's create another function we'll call it f-u-n-c-t-i-o-n menu open and close parentheses open and close curly bracket put the terminator on there go inside the curly bracket and type in echo single quotes Command V, paste in that container, and voila. Okay, now well, something I want to tell you about in Dreamweaver. Whenever I use quotes or single quotes, it automatically puts two in there for me. Okay, so I don't have to sit around and 
take the extra time to put do to, <laughs> two quotes. So it's a time saver whenever you're programming a lot. But uh, that's that's what goes on. So if I would type in echo here and I push um, the uh, single quote, I can already start typing in here. All right. So that's just to show you what's going on there. All right, so let's save our functions file, and we're going to take this menu function we just created, copy, and then we're going to go back to the header, .php, the top here, and I need a PHP tag to call in that function. Paste it in there, put my terminator on, close out the PHP rid of the extra line also extra lines in PHP you don't want to have them why because if when you have the extra lines it, it actually costs a little bit of time uh, for the page to load so you want your applications to be quick so get rid of those extra lines hit command s let's go back to our website refresh the date should disappear and this bar here should stay the same okay and there we go and then there's our do page and our foo page. Okay. So we're cleaning it up a little bit here. It's looking a little bit better. Um, maybe down here where we're having uh, the, uh, the names and the dates echo out, what could we do there? Well, in Bootstrap, there's also something called a well. Uh, number one, these are not in P tags. So let's go ahead and mess with that. We'll do a little bit of bootstrap magic. And that is in the foo.php page. Okay, first, first off, these functions, this function here, and this function here can just be put into our functions.php file. Can, can they not? So let's go ahead and command X, cut it out there. Let it join our list of functions. We'll paste it in there. Let's go ahead and go down another line. Go back and in foo. We'll grab this here. Command X. Go to our functions up. And we'll paste it in right there. It looks nice and neat. Command S, save that. Go to foo. And go ahead, Command S, and save that. And we'll refresh that here. There we go. Still the same thing. So let's go back to our functions.php and give this stuff a little bit of styling, shall we? So where we're echoing the last name, uh, we should actually maybe in, in, you know, encapsulate that in p-tags. So let's put two double quotes, and to concatenate that, remember we have to put a period, and go in those double quotes, put in a p paragraph tag, and then after McCullough, we could just simply go in here and put the closing P tag. All right, now let's save that, see what that looks like. Go back to our website, refresh it. Now we notice we're starting to get some bootstrap formatting there. So let's do the same thing with the, this function down here. So let's go to our functions.php file, and where it says echo last name. Now remember, we're using double quotes here, so all we have to do is put in a p tag. Okay. And instead of the br tag, we'll put a closing p tag. Then that way we'll get some bootstrap for formulation on this particular page. Let's refresh, and there you go. Now, there was one thing I was telling you about, about wells. A boot boot class wells are pretty cool because it'll it'll put everything like in a uh, gray box for you, and some and format it. So if we go, uh, let's go. Um, instead of doing it here, let's do it on the actual page itself. Otherwise, it's going to have a gray box in every one. So let's go to foo.php. And let's go ahead and get rid of these extra lines, shall we? And uh, right here, I'm going to close the PHP tag. I'm going to open the PHP tag up again. 
So I can go inside here and just write straight HTML with my div class of well. So div class equals well. All right. Now notice it closed that div tag there. That's where it can be irritating sometimes whenever I want it to close down here. Okay. We want to make sure that we have that there. And let's go ahead and do another div class of well. I'm just going to actually copy this. I like this lane, paste it, get rid of the extra lines down here, and put in my div tag for my closing well. Let me go ahead and save that so you can see what it looks like. Refresh. Now you see, kind of have a, like a grayish box there and a grayish box there. All right. Okay, so we cleaned it up a little bit. Let's get rid of this is this is coming from a PHP function. We already know what functions do. So we really don't need that anymore. So let's go to our functions.php up here where it's this is coming from a PHP function. Let's get rid of that. Save and uh, do page. I think it was in the header, was it not? Are we calling foo? Yeah, there it is, line 10. So let's go ahead and get rid of that and get rid of that extra line. Command S, save that, refresh it, it's disappearing. Okay, we got our uh, food page and we got our do page. You know, got the date at the bottom, whatever the date is, that's what it's going to show. All right, so we cleaned this up a little bit and uh, in our next tutorial, we're going to talk about PHP query strings. And what that means is, you know, uh, you could grab something from a URL and echo it out on the page. And that's very important in PHP because uh, we're going to be talking about uh, get variables and post variables. And uh, you're going to be using this a lot in your PHP programming. Well, I hope you're enjoying these lessons. If you do, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, this lesson was uh, a little bit, you know, I tried to... Uh, establish a little bit of a foundation with the uh, the, the housekeeping and uh, cleaning up the CSS a little bit on the website. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson. This is Max Bailey, Website Pro. We're